There are so many different AIs on the market today. ChatGPT, Google Gemini 2.5 Pro, Grok, Perplexity, Claw 4, and more. And honestly, it's hard to keep up with all of them. But there are two that clearly stand above the rest, ChatGPT and Google Gemini 2.5 Pro. In this video, I'm gonna compare these two models, not by showing you prompts or output side by side, but by walking you through the experience of using each one. I'm gonna talk about what it's like to actually work with them day to day, the benefits, the drawbacks, and the things most people don't mention. And as we go, I'll be keeping score. I'll award one point to the model that wins each category. And at the end, I'll tally the score and let you know which one I think is best overall for the everyday user of AI. So let's start with price and access. ChatGPT is a flat $20 per month, which isn't bad at all for what they give you, but there are usage limits, even on the paid tier. There's a limit on how many deep researches you can do and how many messages you can send to GPT-03. Sometimes I'll stack two, three, even four tasks in one prompt, especially during deep work. And while that used to work perfectly, lately the model has started responding to only one task at a time. It's as though OpenAI knows what's going on and they're trying to conserve usage. Now, that's not always the case, but it's happening often enough to affect the experience. I think it's because a lot of people naturally try to bundle tasks when usage is limited, so it makes sense, but it's still slightly frustrating. Now, compare that to Google Gemini 2.5 Pro. If you have a Google Workspace account, even the basic one at $7 or the business standard at $16 a month, you already have access to Gemini Pro and Notebook LM Plus. And even if you don't have workspace, you can still access Gemini through Google One for $19.99 a month. And that includes cloud storage too. So when it comes to value and access, this one's pretty easy. I'm gonna have to give a point to Google. Interface and ease of use. Both tools still follow that classic vertical chat style layout, which honestly needs to go. It works, but it's not ideal for long-term projects or keeping things organized. What we really need is a dashboard view where we can manage prompts, files, and outputs like projects. Now, ChatGPT has folders, which is one small step in the right direction. It's helpful, but it still feels limited. So I'll give ChatGPT one point here for at least trying to address this issue. But I also have to give credit to Google because Gemini workflow integrates directly with Google Docs and Sheets. So when you get a helpful response, you can export it directly to Docs with just one click. That's huge. You're not constantly copy pasting like you are with ChatGPT, which most people are just pasting into Google Docs anyway. So even though ChatGPT gets one point for interface, I'm going to give Google a point for integration. Now let's talk about the experience with the core features, which is what everyone really wants to hear about. Now let's talk about multimodality, images, video, audio. Google Gemini supports a 1 million token context window. That's roughly 750,000 words, a huge data set. Meanwhile, ChatGPT has a 128,000 token limit or 96,000 words. ChatGPT generates the best images between the two models and some basic video through Sora. But let's be honest, those videos don't have sound or depth. Google crushes ChatGPT here. Google VEO3, Video FX, and Google Flow all support video generation with sound, background noise, and ambient effects on top of speech that syncs to the person's or the character's lips. On top of that, Gemini also supports audio generation. You can generate podcast-style audio using Notebook LM or Google Canvas. This next category is huge, and it's one of the biggest reasons why I haven't switched to Google full-time. Let's talk about memory and follow-up. With ChatGPT, especially if you've created a custom GPT, it remembers your internal instructions. If it gets off track and starts hallucinating, you can literally tell it, go back to your instructions and it'll pull itself back on course. With Google Gemini, and this happens way too often, it'll just forget everything. I've created what they call Google Gems with detailed step-by-step -step processes, uploaded 40 to 50,000 characters of instruction, which is a major plus, and I'll come back days later and it's like the gem has no memory at all. It just just says, I don't have a process for that. Even in regular chat, if you respond with a single word sometimes, something like deadline, 
ChatGPT understands what you're referring to based on the previous message. But Gemini, it often acts like you just started a brand new conversation from scratch. That kind of disconnect kills the workflow. And ChatGPT goes even further. It has a count wide memory. So now it remembers people, places, projects, and recurring themes. You can add custom instructions at the account level and also inside folders. And it'll remember your style, your preferences, and even your tone. So that's a huge win for ChatGPT. But now let's talk about deep research and export usability. And I'll be honest, I'll tell you in advance, I'm going to get on a small soapbox here because this category is a little more nuanced. Google Gemini's deep research is better. It pulls from hundreds of websites and the results feel wide, deep and current. You can actually feel the data set being larger when you're reading the outputs. ChatGPT, on the other hand, often feels more like a curated overview. It's still useful, but it's just not as comprehensive. But here's where things flip. When you export the research with Google Gemini into a Google Doc, the citations are broken. You get all the numbered references inside the test and a big citation list at the end, but none of the links are clickable from the main test. But with ChatGPT, it is flawless. You get a clean white paper, beautiful formatting, and active citations. You click a number, the site opens. You hit the back button, and you're right back where you left off. It feels like a professional grade export every single time. So yes, Google Gemini Deep Research and Notebook LM powered by Google Gemini are awesome research tools but the export experience is so poor that it cancels itself out. So I have to give a point to ChatGPT because I'm always left wondering, how can I take the research that I've done with Google and format it like an interactive white paper that I get with ChatGPT? So now let's look at the integrations. ChatGPT connects with Zapier, Notion, Slack, and a whole list of third-party platforms. You can build automation, generate content directly into your systems, and build a real workflow around it. Google on paper should have the upper hand here. They've got Gmail, Docs, Sheets, Slides, all of it integrated into Gemini, but here's the problem. Half the time, it doesn't work. You're in Gmail trying to rewrite an email using Gemini. It'll say something like, I can't do that. If you're in Gemini trying to use the et symbol to grab a document, it says, I'm a chat bot. I can't search your docs. It's buggy. It's not ready and it's frustrating. So while Google has more tools, more ambition as far as what they want to build for their ecosystem, ChatGPT has more reliability. So point goes to ChatGPT. When it comes to price and access, Google. When it comes to interface, ChatGPT. When it comes to integration, Google. As it pertains to multimodality and content size, Google. Memory and follow-up, ChatGPT gets a point. Deep research and export, ChatGPT gets another point. Ecosystem integration, ChatGPT. That gives us a final score of ChatGPT 4, Google Gemini 3. But this isn't just about who won. It's about which one is right for you. If your work involves research, content creation, or long form analysis, and you're already deep in the Google ecosystem, Gemini brings a lot of power, especially with video, audio, and visual tools. The content size and integrated docs, sheets, support make it incredibly capable. But if you want consistency, memory that sticks, and a tool that feels polished and reliable every single time, you'll still want to lean on ChatGPT. It remembers better, it exports cleaner, and it just works. Now, if Google fixes the little things, the broken exports, the unreliable gems, the clunky integrations, they could absolutely take the lead. But until then, ChatGPT is still the more complete platform. So now I want to hear from you. Which platform do you prefer, ChatGPT or Google Gemini Pro 2.5? Let me know in the comments. And if you got value from this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss what's coming next. And as always, take care, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.